All right, everybody, welcome back to another x Gaming video, x here, and today what I want to do is give to you my personable review for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, this is a very special game. I'm excited to share my experience and my review and my time with this game. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump to it. All right, so like I was saying, what we're going to do is jump right to the review of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. As of the time of this recording, this game is a console exclusive for the PlayStation 5. Not available anywhere else at this time. It is supposed to arrive at PC platforms at some point in the future. Rumor has it it was supposed to be about a three-month timed exclusive, but we'll see kind of what happens. Those windows are a little shaky and less verified right away. So let's go right to the beginning here. The first thing that I do want to say about this game is some of the footage that you're seeing is going to be as spoiler free as possible. This review is as spoiler free as possible. Um, it shouldn't spoil anything story wise really for you. Um, this is just going to kind of show some of the uh, areas, Gold Saucer, Gungaga region and so on and so forth. So just kind of wanted to share it minimally. Uh, with you so as to with it being a newer game right I don't want this being too spoiled for you this this the best that you can do for yourselves is to go in knowing as little as possible for the experience now that being said this game story wise is of course the sequel to the first one being Final Fantasy 7 remake now that being said again I'm gonna keep a spoiler free stuff for the story but what I do want to state is if you have watched Final Fantasy 7 Advent Children this is kind of leaning towards that the director said it's leaning towards wanting to lead into that movie there if you haven't watched it definitely check it out if you want to um, it is a pretty good overall film it's it's a little lore heavy it's a little slow at times stuff like that but it if you do love final fantasy 7 especially uh, i think you're gonna have a good time with that that being said as well let's get to the nitty-gritty now that all of that is out of the way um this game starting off is just a true love letter to the fans of final fantasy 7 or just final fantasy in general but especially to the fans that grew up playing the original Final Fantasy VII. Did you play the original Final Fantasy VII? If you did, fantastic. This game is going to be 110% up your alley. Obviously, it's not totally turn-based. It's more action-based, um, real-time-based, stuff like that. So if that is new to you, maybe this won't jar with you, but I think it is a great Tarrant transition. And honestly, as RPGs go on, I'm leaning more towards the more action-oriented RPG aspects, such as like this or Tales of Arise or all, all sorts of stuff like that, right? More action-esque. And I always have a special place in my heart. I can still go back and play the turn-based games as well if I want to and be okay with it, but I certainly do have a preference for this new method. Um, so if you do give it a chance and you're more of a turn-based person, really give it a chance and, and kind of keep that open mind of, hey, you know, I know it's not turn-based, but they did a phenomenal job with how they did this. Now, that being said, the combat is very similar to Final Fantasy VII Remakes if you did play that one. Uh, they did refine things just a little bit. They didn't change anything too over the top. You do have abilities that are like combined or pseudo duo abilities basically that you can do with let's say Cloud and Aerith, Cloud and Barrett, Barrett and Tifa, Aerith and Red, you know, who, whoever you want to combine and as long as you unlock those in your skill tree, yes you have some skill trees, they're called your portfolios, that'll unlock those duo abilities as well as other abilities as well that I think does a better job than Final Fantasy VII Remake where when you unlocked some abilities from your weapons or your skills that had to do with some sort of like a materia-based point system uh, where you open it up and you had like a an orbit, a planet type of thing, and you'd go around and lock them. And it was fine. I think it, it was very serviceable and it did its job just fine. Uh, the portfolio portion, what is better about it is it's more streamlined and you have even more choices in a way and directions that you want to go with this. Uh, I think that is super cool and special, but some of the drawbacks, it's not perfect. I do think that there's some pieces where 
uh, you look at that and you're like, hey, I can't see the whole picture. Where is this going to go kind of thing, like in your mind or whatever the case is. So uh, some of that uh, kind of akin to a sphere grid, if you remember Final Fantasy X and you've played that, kind of like that. But it's really good overall. You just got to kind of be open because it's vastly different than remakes. So I just kind of want to put that out there. Um, that being said as well... Um, that combat, like I said, more refined, more fluid. It's just great. The fact that what's special is you can always flip around on the fly, just like in the last one, your party of three that you can swap in and out. Now, what's great about this is everybody's available this time, right? Now we're in an open world aspect pretty much right away when you get to this game. You finally get to an open world aspect. Now you do have to kind of complete or at least story-wise complete each section what i mean by that is if you're talking about the grasslands whether you're talking about the desertish areas gangaga you're talking about nibbleheim you're talking about <laughs> all that stuff um you you complete those and you can go back to those it's a it's a little wonky when you have to go back to them because it's limited you do have traversal methods such as chocobos vehicles um, stuff like that. I think those are all exceptionally well done and easy to do. Uh, it's just really, really cool to see kind of brought to life. Now, that being said, at the very end of the game, you beat it, or even right before you get to the main quest scenario, you get done to all of that content. It really does open up so you can basically fast travel to a ton of different points all over the map in all the areas that you did visit before. So I like, I honestly really enjoy that method um, of how it, you know, in a way, I don't want to say forces you to look at every region and every map and have to forcefully go through it with by foot or vehicle or chocobo once unlocked and all that. Um, but it, it's good it does that, but it doesn't make you retread in a way of like, that's all I have to do all the time. No, by the end, it rewards you. You've done this. You've put your time and effort into that. Everything's opened up. Have fun. Clean up side quests, side missions, bonus battles, VR mission battles, whatever you want to do. The sky's the limit at the end of the game. The end of the game doesn't have to wait for you to finish all the side missions. It doesn't have to wait for you to finish everything. You can certainly go through the story and have a great time. Come back and clean it up. Or if you need a break, go back and clean it up. Again, this game is going to take you. It took me with doing a bunch of side quests and a bunch of side content, VR missions, stuff like that. Not every little thing, but I did most of it. And I got done at around 103, 104 hours. Now, I think that is phenomenal. <laughs> um, somebody with my time uh, that I have available, uh, that can be limiting or seem limiting, of course, um, because my sweet spot personally is 35 to 40 hours for most games. If you do beeline the story, you can certainly do it within that time frame. But this game honestly is so special. I really, truly feel the need to want to do all the side content. Some folks are going to be nitpicky. They're going to be upset at how much side content there, are, there is and how much side missions there are. How many mini games? How many times have I heard there's too many mini games and this and that? I know that is for most of the folks out there. And this isn't for any of the new folks. If you don't know, you don't know. I understand. But in the OG Final Fantasy VII, there was so much side content you could do. You go to the Gold Saucer. The Gold Saucer has a ton of different mini games there alone. You also have other things. You can go back to Fort Condor in the original. That returns on this one as well. Um, there are additional mini games in this game for sure, but it all adds to the life and the lore and the experience itself. Not as anything really pushed on you on a mini game that you have to do. Keep that in mind. The mini games are not something you have to do. Maybe a couple. But it's not that hard, and it's not that frequent, and it's very fun and adds to the experience it, as a whole. I've never seen so many people get so upset about the side content in mini games that are certainly optional. Uh, it's it's crazy. But speaking of all that, I think all the mini games, 90% of it is great stuff. Whether it's Fort Condor, whether it's the mini stuff at the Gold Saucer, you're talking about the battles, you're talking about the motorcycle race, you're talking about the Chocobo races, of course, how can we forget about that? Uh, those are fantastic as well. Um, man, it, it, the Fort Condor, I think they refined that, that did better. Um, the only one that I don't 
care for is the, I think it's called the Bits and Gambits or something like that off the top of my head. I'm so sorry I didn't look this up before, but it's the Bits and Gambits or whatever. It's like a side like strategy where you're putting out some, uh, you know, robots to attack this giant king slime and you have other mini slimes and different, you know, weaknesses and stuff. I didn't care for that one so much as matter of fact, a lot of folks didn't. Uh, they released a pretty quick patch to that to give it an easier mode because it was that overbearing. But again, this was side content. This wasn't something you had to do. Um, and you don't even come across this till well halfway into the game, if not more. So keep that in mind as well. But very nitpicky stuff like that. Um, but of course, we'll move on here. Um, I think what is something else to bring to note is how well casted each character is, right? The characters are fantastically voiced, whether it's Cloud, Tifa, Aerith, Red 13, Kate Sith, Barrett, Sid Highwind, and Vincent Valentine. They all are fantastically cast. They all bring everything to the table. It's just like if that text and narrative was coming to life back in the OG to me. Um, I enjoyed every moment of it. Inside, I was giddy. Here I am at my age getting giddy inside of like, this is just, again, recircling back to this is a love letter to us fans and hopefully this um, adheres and creates more adoring fans that are just now experiencing Final Fantasy 7 the first time whether it be through remake rebirth in the final in the trilogy that will be coming out um, so I, I really really like to see that kind of feedback from folks and how endearing it is to them that being said as well let's hit the story again not spoilerish but I do want to say that it just hits every note from A to Z. Every note, A to Z. They take everything from the original and they expand upon it. And not too heavily. They expand upon it perfectly. I want to know about more about this section. It's there. I want to know why Tifa thinks this and Tifa does that from the original. What's, what's more? Why did she do that? Why did she make that decision? It's there. The dates that you can go on with, with uh, Cloud and whoever the accomplice might be at that point in time during the infamous Gold Saucer section, uh, you know, every single one has something to bring to the table and more in depth. It's just great to see in every way, shape, and form. Um, again, I want to go into more detail about a lot of that, but I won't just to keep the super spoiler free. Um, but it's just, I will tell you, it doesn't matter what the section is. They expand upon it. It makes more sense. It clicks better. It makes you resonate more with each and every character. Each and every character has their moment to shine as well. That's what's fantastic. They all have a moment to be there to shine. They have a reason to be there for each other, for Cloud, for the ending, for the finale when it does happen. That's what's fantastic. I have not seen in such a long time something so special being created. The combat's phenomenal. The fast travel's phenomenal. The on foot, the, carib uh, the chocobos, the vehicles, you name it. Everything is so well done. And oh my gosh, we don't want to forget about the awesome new card game that was in there. It's not shoehorned in there. It's the best card game ever to be implemented in any Final Fantasy game in the series. That is Queen's Blood. Queen's Blood was so good, I didn't want to stop playing it. Obviously, they had such great feedback. I see this being, at the minimum, a mobile game where they could make bank on this. A free-to-play mobile game, or they can expand upon it and have its own game. They can put in DLC, whatever they want to do. This game is so good. And at first, just like with any card game, it takes a moment to be like, I don't understand how this is played. But once you spend like a half hour with it, you really start to understand the mechanics. And as you go on through the game, you're going to get more and more cards that you can unlock, get, purchase, win from the battles and duels, because you want to be the best Yu-Gi-Oh player out there um, <laughs> with your monster deck or whatever. Um, 
it's it's just so well done and what's great about this that adds to the lore is the game itself has meaning has good meaning it has lore it has a story behind it of why it was created how it was created a darkness looming behind it something that's being unlocked and the mystery is being unraveled as you play through each and every rank up mission battle for that so for example you are playing against just random people that are spread throughout you have a good time you beat them you have some good back and forth you get a card stuff like that once you beat a certain amount of people you get to a rank where that's a person you have to beat that's supposed to be the tougher person out of the group and then you go ahead and beat them no matter where they might be located once you do that you get a story piece unlocked for that piece of queen's blood it was so good it had me i was almost more intrigued on that than anything else even the main story the main story obviously intrigued me more but it was kind of neck and neck at times because i was like i really want to see what's going on here something paranormal going on here what's going on it was so good um but yes it all the benefits there now let's quickly go over any cons like i said the mini the mini game for the gambit thing i keep forgetting the name of it that that's a little misstep but again it's not forced so what what kind of misstep is that now people are going to complain that performance mode wasn't that great resolution mode wasn't that great there's blurring this here and there i don't know i play on an oled i honestly didn't see it i play in an og or an lg oled c1 model of a tv i didn't really see it and i'm not just being biased there if there's an issue i will call it out a hundred percent but i just played in performance mode 99% of the time messed around with resolution mode of course um, but I didn't really care for the 30 frames I thought this game shines really well with 60 frames now is it the most graphically impressive game as far as uh, the environments and stuff not necessarily but you're obviously seeing that from the videos I'm showing you um, that being said right what do we got going on it, it's it's still really good the character models are just fantastic i know people poke fun and they get the lighting wrong you'll see some wonky cloud or tifa um you know model rendering from the light and stuff like that i never came across that as you can see i've showed shared many pictures online on social media you name it but from beginning to end i was not bored i wanted to keep playing it was hard to put down and quite frankly this has got to be my game of the year already and we're only in what at the time of this recording obviously april i'm about 30 hours into dragon's dogma 2 and stuff like that a really good game overall but has a lot of missteps and we'll maybe hit a review for that but uh don't don't nail me down for that um so <laughs> it's ultimately this game is just i can't say enough i can make this an hour-long review but to save you time i just wanted to hit over the basics be as spoiler free as possible if you want to see a spoiler review for this please let me know down in the comments below but for now let's go ahead and give this the score that it deserves and again this deserves a 10 out of 10 that's the ranking system i always go off of one out of 10 a 10 out of 10 this game is not flawless i still don't know a game to this day that is if anybody tells you a game is flawless it's not it doesn't matter if it's half-life 2 it doesn't matter if it's uncharted 2 it doesn't matter if it's halo 3 there's still some hiccups a lot of these games whether it's last of us one there's still some hiccups but that doesn't mean the game doesn't deserve that perfect score of a 10 out of 10 this game truly deserves it truly deserves it. i had no issues i had no crashes i had no bugs i had no glitches i didn't have any performance issues the pacing people can state is a little off but it's an open world game you can go straight from beginning of the story to the end and it still be okay you're gonna have a couple forced mini games that's it the, the pacing is very well done all things considered this was typically disc number two right in the og series um, carrying over to the third one and whatnot but it is so good you guys so good check this out if you're not a final fantasy fan check it out if you are a final fantasy fan what are you waiting for do not wait another moment go get this game go play it by any means necessary it's phenomenal to me this is a system seller and i'm so glad i didn't miss out day one on this game 
So that being said, thanks so much for sticking around for the entirety of this video and this review. I wanted to share as much as possible. I could again went on and on, but I'll keep it as simple and short as I can. This game is my personal game of the year. We'll see if that changes later on. There's plenty of stuff to be coming out, of course, but this is a heavy front runner for the time being, and I don't see that being beat but we'll see. Uh, thanks again, everybody. At this point in time, we are at 1,588 subscribers out of the 2,000 goal. Thank you so much. We're just killing it as usual. You guys are phenomenal. Thank you so, so much. Um, if you haven't already, leave a like. I'd love to hear you down in the comments down below. That also helps out the algorithm. And if you haven't, definitely consider subscribing, helping out a small content creator like myself. And we'll see you all next time on the next x Gaming video. And until then, Take care.